right, so there's the boat. Sitting on the trailer for the first time. Big boat. Sits on the trailer real nice. Uh, so now I can, uh, I was a little hesitant on the length of the tongue and everything else, but honestly, I, everything worked out good. That, that length looks good. I wasn't sure if I was gonna cut a little bit off, but um, it's about perfect. I'm gonna leave it. So anyway, uh, now that I've got the, uh, the boat on the trailer, now it's a little bit more mobile. Naturally, I can uh, put the fenders on. After the spray rail, I'm gonna go ahead and, and install the, the spray rail down the side now before I put the fenders on it. Since those are uh, polished diamond plate, I don't wanna get them full of spatter from welding. Then, so I'll install that, uh, fenders, and then we'll make a plate and an upright for our winch, for our front of our boat. And then after that, it's simple as, um, I've got a couple cover plates for the trailer to cover up some uh, some corners there, and then we just need to um, install the brake lines and wiring. Uh, the brake line's gonna run to the back for the surge brakes on the front axle, and then all the wiring for the lights, for the fenders, and everything else. But anyway, there it sits, sitting on the, uh, sitting on the trailer. It turned out real nice. Everything came together real nice. It's got some cool lines. I love the lines of it. Uh, It kind of stays flat for this part of it. And then about halfway down the boat, it starts sweeping out towards the end. So anyway, really turned out pretty well, I think, for the hull. Uh, now, now the fun work begins. Then we get to get inside and make it exactly how I want uh, after, after we get these spray rails and everything else on. So that's cool. So anyway. Get this guy in the uh, in the shed, and we'll start welding on her again. Dirty again. All right, so I got the boat back in the uh, back in the shop here, and now we're going to work on the spray rail. Now, a lot of boats you see don't have a spray rail, and I think that's a big flaw. Um, I'm a huge fan of the spray rail. Most of your aluminum, your higher end aluminum boat manufacturers will put spray rails on boats. Um, not so much on fiberglass boats, but they kind of have a, a reverse chime built in where it kind of shoots the water down. And that's the whole point of the spray rail because basically what's gonna happen is, especially with a boat this long, you know, this boat's 25 foot long. So, and with it being a tiller handle, if I end up breaking a wave way up here and I'm not able to shoot the water out away what's going to happen is especially if you're heading into the wind what's going to happen is the water is going to shoot up and you're going to drive right into it basically and it's going to create quite a wet ride so one way to prevent that is with a spray rail and basically all it is is a piece of material that sets at the bottom of the boat the bottom edge of the boat and whenever the boat cuts through the water that spray rail will actually shoot the water down and out and, and get that water as far away from the boat as possible, making a dry ride. So how would I accomplish this? Well, naturally you can see because I welded on the outside, I've got a seam here and I've ground this down and got this to where this is about 3 16 material thick there, maybe a quarter in places. It's not really a, a huge concern because it's gonna get covered up. And this was my plan from the beginning, is to kind of try to create a boat with no weld seams. I wanted a welded boat that you couldn't hardly tell that it was pieced together. I wanted it to look almost, almost uniform, like it was bent out of one piece of material. So here's how I'm going to do that. I've got a piece, this is a, a mock piece, this is an eighth inch material. I'm going to use three sixteenths full length whenever I do this, but I just wanted to kind of show you what I've got. So setting on top of that weld bead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a grinder and I'm just going to take off the high spots where my overlaps were on my weld. And it's going to create quite a flat surface. And what I'm going to do then is, because I know my boat is straight from this point back here, clear up to where uh, I cut 
to bring the boat up. That's all straight. So I can actually measure from the bottom of the boat up and I can snap a line to follow. That way I'm not uh, relying on, on this as keeping me up and down. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece of angle. I've got a piece of inch and a quarter angle. I'm gonna set the angle. I apologize, I'm trying to do this with one hand. I'm gonna set the angle like so against the boat. And I'm gonna weld underneath. It's gonna look really, really clean. And, uh, and that's gonna hide basically all this ugliness. You'll never be able to see that. It'll all be underneath the spray rail. And then as you move through the water, the spray rail will be quite functional. So once we get up to the, uh, to where the boat starts curving, then that's where it gets kind of fun because what I'm gonna do then, is you can see, it's gonna hang past. So what I'm gonna do then, is I'm gonna take on this profile here of the angle, and I'm gonna cut a small V wedge in it. And what I do is, a series of V wedges will allow me to bend that material all the way up the front of the boat, and then I can come in, I can weld that V shut, grind it smooth, and then this will be one continuous smooth radius all the way throughout. So it'll give the illusion, basically, that this boat is one piece all the way through. And it's kind of what I tried to mimic here uh, in the keel. You can see I've, I've ground fairly smooth all the way through. Once you get paint on it, you'll never know that that piece was welded. Now, opinions vary. Some people would prefer to have that nice weld seam. Well, here's the thing. I'm not welding this with a pulse MIG gun. Uh, you know, you, you guys can see my weld beads. You know, they, they, they look fairly good. I mean, they're, they're definitely passable. They're not a row of nickels. And it's just very difficult to get that. Uh, see if I can zoom in, if it'll focus. There we go. There's some of the welds there. Mind you, none of these have been cleaned up either because I knew I was gonna cover them up. I'll bring you down here to some of these. You can see where I've ground down to try to gain a little bit less thickness. But anyway, those are the welds. So they don't look like a row of nickels. You're just not gonna hardly get that with a spool gun. Uh, you know, unless you have that pulse MIG with a, a bunch of different settings. Nevertheless, they look fine. Now some of you are gonna say, well, why didn't you just take the whole thing? Well, as simple as time. Uh, it would take forever to do what I've done. There's, just in this hall right here, there is already uh, several hundreds and hundreds of feet of, of weld bead. And I can go so much quicker with a spool gun as opposed to, to a TIG gun. Not only that, dealing with this aluminum uh you know i can i can kind of i wouldn't say skimp but i can get by with a little bit dirtier material uh by by welding with the spool gun so anyway that's that uh i'm gonna go ahead here and i'm gonna get set up like i said i'm just gonna take the high spots off my overlaps and then i'll be able to snap a line basically up to right here on the boat about nine foot from the end and I'll be able to follow that line with the top edge of my angle and then here I'll start cutting the V's and it'll uh, it'll come together real nice and it's gonna look real nice, it's gonna be really functional and it's gonna hide that whole weld seam all the way down the boat. So, anyway, this is the, this is the side that's done here. I'll just give you a look. Uh, one solid piece of inch and a quarter by 3 16 angle all the way down the boat. And you can see basically, you know, how clean of a look it is. You, you can't tell uh, by me welding, I ended up welding the whole thing uh, and then blended it. You, you can't tell hardly that, uh, you know, it's a welded boat at this point. So this is the look that I've got on this side and I'll just bring you around here. This is the, the unfinished side here. You can see this is the, uh, the weld seam here. This is basically what I'm covering up. Uh, you can see I went through here and I've ground off the, uh, the overlaps, the high spots. 
I've touched this up here, brought this out, so all this ugliness basically will be covered once I throw that piece of angle up. And then uh, what I'm gonna, once I start doing that, uh, I know from the other side, my measurements, that I need to come in and start cutting. And I'll take a little V-notch out of that piece of angle. That way I can bend it right up that radius, bring it on up, and then uh, then this outside of this boat will pretty much be done. Uh, with the exception of back here, I need to finish finish welding that that in right there, and then just trim that off. Uh, I've trimmed off the the corners here. This is this is the finished look here. After a little bit of grinding, it'll get ground smooth, uh, but the, the taper is there. It follows down, all right down through there. This will all be ground in smooth, so it'll have just a little protrusion out the back there, but it uh, you won't be able to see, see anything, same as the other side. So it's kind of cool. We're getting to the, uh, a lot of finished grinding here, spending a lot more time uh, you know, being very careful with our grinds here. So anyway, uh, for those of you asking about the, the grinding wheels, the best things I have found, uh, you know, are the flap discs and I've been using these here. I started off, oh, not that one. I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Uh, these here, these are from, uh, focus there. From Lee Valley Abrasives. They're made for aluminum. Now, let me go back to this one here. You can see this kind of flap disc here. Focus. And uh, this flap disc here, it has no coating on it. Whereas these ones that are made for aluminum, they've got a white coating on them. And that, that white coating uh, it'll allow the, uh, the flat disc to last a little longer and it won't get it clogged up like you see on uh, you know your traditional metal flat disc. This is a this is a big seven inch wheel you can see see the coating in there but Lee Valley abrasives is the way to go. Let's see if it'll focus on that. Calcium sterate liquefying aid but uh you know i'm getting right now i'm getting these four and a half inch ones for just over two bucks a p just under two bucks i think like 205 something like that i'm getting these big seven inch ones for uh i think around four and a half dollars a piece if you go to my local hardware store these are about 12 bucks a piece and these are uh, around five or six so by ordering uh i just got another shipment in Spend a lot of spend a lot on abrasives doing this stuff, but uh, you know it really uh, really helps to kind of shop around. So. Anyway, let's set you up and get that started. I feel like I've been talking a lot. I'm gonna throw you up on a time lapse, and we're gonna knock this side out. And then our outside of our hall will pretty much be done. <laughs> 